Marion Scrimgeour was the first Aboriginal woman to hold a cabinet position in an Australian government. She was elected to the Northern Territory Parliament in 2001. Eleven years on, she's announced she won't be contesting the Territory election in August. I spoke to Marion Scrimgeour earlier about her decision. Marion Scrimgeour, welcome to the program. Thank you, Louisa. When did you decide that you won't be contesting the August election? Look, I, I had my nomination in. I, I wanted to go again and I'd been talking to a number of people um, and then I sort of made the decision, look, I, you know, that, that I needed to do something else. And, and a lot of that came on the back of recently I've been involved as the chair of the select committee looking at, at youth suicide in the Northern Territory. And uh, a lot of the issues that we picked up, people we spoke to, communities that we visited, um, there, there was a stark reality that said to me, you know, just what are we doing and, and how are we making a difference? And just that need to, to want to go back home and get back down on the community and, and to do some, some work that I otherwise can't do as a local member. You were the first Indigenous female Cabinet Minister, but you quit Labor uh, in 2009, citing opposition to the government's homeland policy. You rejoin later that year after Alison Anderson's um, departure from Labor. Do you feel that you've been too impulsive in politics? I, I, I suppose, um, you know, my outspokenness or my behaviour might be seen as being, you know, indulgent or, or you know, um, that, that impulsive, but you know, I, I, I like to think that I was reflecting the, the very strong views of, of the people that actually elected me, and that was my constituency. Do you feel you, you let personalities get in the way of uh, decision making? Oh, not at all. If you're talking about the personalities between myself and Alison Anderson, I mean, we're, we've, we've both been, I, I suppose, quite big characters and personalities in the Northern Territory political context. And, and look, I, I you know, we, we both uh, said at different times, you know, like uh, it, it's not a secret that neither her or I ever got on. But at the end of the day, I think we both had a, have a passion uh, to try and get things better on the ground in those communities. You've said uh, education is the key to delivering change in Indigenous communities and closing the gap, but you were in charge of education in the Territory in 2008. Do you concede that, that perhaps you played a part in, in the failure to deliver any change for Indigenous education? Yeah, look, I, I, one of the, the biggest things, Louisa, and, I, and I, one of the biggest regrets that I have uh, is the way in which I communicated at the time when I was the Minister, the whole uh, issue of bilingual uh, in the Northern Territory. Now, it was never my intention, never, uh, to remove Aboriginal languages from being used as a tool for the instruction for English. But I think that many people had misinterpreted that, and I didn't help that by communicating and, and saying that Aboriginal people shall only speak uh, English for the first four hours, which wasn't true. Um, so, yeah, do I have regrets? I, I certainly do. I think that, you know, in, the, in that instance, um, it, it could have been done better. And if I had my time over, I probably would do it differently. However, I don't, uh, you know, retreat from the fact that we, you know, that I thought that the debate that we were having about languages was a red herring, that kids have got to get to school. That's the big issue, is the attendance. What about um, in 2008, uh, the Education Department CEO, Margaret Banks, was fired? Now, was, was that a result of, of a personality clash that, that you couldn't get along? Oh, look, there, there were differences that Margaret and I have, and, you know, and I'm not going to go back over that ground. I think the biggest mistake that I had, I said, uh, I said that she had retired instead of resigned. And, and, and from then on, it, it had, you know, that the whole thing had gone pear-shaped and, and I, was, I was crucified. I think that, you know, I didn't handle it well and I think it should have been handled properly. And Margaret, in hindsight, Margaret Banks deserved uh, better than, than to have me bungle that uh, and, and I should have done better. You were uh, an outspoken critic of the intervention in 2007, labelling it the, the black kids tamper and a vicious new McCarthyism. Your comments created divisions within the Labor Party. Do you regret those comments now? No, I don't. 
I, I think if you look at the, and it was only recently that I went back over and I had a look at my Charles Perkins oration and the speech that I delivered. And I think that if anyone reads that speech, uh, the relevance of that speech and the criticisms that I put on, on then uh, are so relevant today. And I think that uh, where it divided the Labor Party, I think that uh, certainly uh, my language, and I said at the time, uh, maybe I could have toned it down a little bit, but I don't, uh, you know, take back my criticism of, of that intervention. I, you know, I mean, there's a lot of criticism at the moment in terms of Stronger Futures, but I think Stronger Futures is certainly a, a sight a whole lot better than what we had in terms of the Northern Territory intervention. Now, you've said you plan to go back to, to your community when you retire in August, and any plans beyond that? Um, look, I, I think uh, I think we'll watch this space. I keep saying to people, I think that makes a few people nervous. But look, <laughs> I'm not going to retreat. I will go back to the communities. But um, yeah, as I said, watch this space. Marion Scrimgeour, thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you.